in here, Mr. Cook from some back for another session in the Brilliant Footsteps Festival in Sweet Kitchen. Hope you're all keeping really well. Um, lots of terrible stuff going on in the news at the moment. Um, very, very hard to keep upbeat and positive and focused, uh, especially when you're already suffering with, with chronic illness. So my heart goes out to everybody. Um, try and keep a sense of perspective and a bit of balance so you do give yourself some up time as well. Um, it's hard not to, but try and not watch too much of the news uh, too often, um, although it is it's heartbreaking. But I'm going to bring you a little bit of joy, I hope, for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, hope you enjoy what we're going to do. So we're going to carry on with the anti-inflammatory low FODMAP type approach to, to food. Really important, obviously. Uh, so I'm not a nutritionist, but I am learning. Um, and uh, I'll share with you who I'm learning from in the Q&A. Um, because she's brilliant. Um, so if you follow the festival, actually, you might, you've seen it, might have seen it before. She's fantastic. So, right, where do we start? Basically, got some music going. I can hear it. You probably can't. Discovered some new music this week. Never heard of these guys before. Um, Gangs of Youth, they're an Australian band. Um, that are set up over here now and they're just brilliant. I actually love what they're doing. Sort of rock, sort of rock, a bit of everything really. Really, really love them. I uh, heard them live on uh, Sunday brunch. Amazing. So, music's playing, got the music going. We need to now just breathe, get yourself ready. I do it every time I cook just to make sure that I'm prepared and ready and can get myself in a good place ready to start cooking. So just close my eyes, a few deep breaths, and then feeling much better. So let's go. I'm going to do sauces for corsets. Um, three sauces from different parts of the world that are super delicious, super fragrant, and so versatile you can use them on anything. So the first one I'm going to do is a, a green pesto, but it's a little bit different to probably pesto as you've seen before, and you'll see, but it's so easy, it's brilliant. All going to be made in my trusty little whizzer, um, which is brilliant. It's uh, a small one, and much easier to handle. Um, I get help bringing it over here um, with everything, but it just makes everything a lot easier to, to, to not have to fumble around with. So what's going to go in this? There are going to be some walnuts, some fresh basil, some fresh mint, some lemon, lemon zest and lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper. And that's really it. So it's really great. So I'll start with walnuts. Now I'm using my cups again. I've got half a cup of walnuts, which I've just spilled all over the table. But that's just to show it's live and it doesn't really matter at all. Now half a cup goes in. Now if you like your pesto a bit more nutty and a bit more, which will, I'm going to go a bit more. I'm going to go a quarter of a cup more, so three quarters of a cup, just because I like that texture in there. Now, to get this going first, just give it a whiz to break down the walnuts. Okay, so they're now all crumbly dumbly, which is fantastic. So next in, basil. Now, I got this fresh basil from my local fruit and veg store who are just amazing. Uh, if you can get to a local fruit and veg rather than the supermarket, do because it's just incredible. You do pay a bit more, but my God, it's worth it. So this, look at this basil, it's amazing. So I've got a massive big handful of basil, stalks and all, stalks, always use the stalks, they're so good uh, in uh, salads, everything. Just chop them up, they're brilliant. So basil goes in, a good big handful, and then I'm gonna put in a little bit of mint as well. Now, not too much mint because it can be a bit overpowering. Uh, now, unlike basil, don't use the stalks of the, uh, the mint, a little bit woody. So I'm just going to put a couple of handful of handful bits full there, and that goes in. And then I'm just going to give that another. see already we've got a most fantastic crumb going on. So next 
I'm going to go in with olive oil. Now, I've got here a quarter of a cup of olive oil. There it goes. And then we've got really nice unwaxed lemon. Now, I'm going to zest the lemon in. Now, you can use one of these, which is great, and just, if you're going to do it, do it like, like they're supposed to, just rest it on, it's a lot easier to do. Or, you can see, you'll have seen this before maybe from me, my uh, trusty, clever chopping board from Active Hands. So that just flips over, sits on top, and then literally just Start making up little rhythms and tunes if you like. Being a, a drummer myself, it's hard not to. These are so good, these boards, because you don't have to um, worry about things slipping or getting yourself cut or just not having the strength to do it because this is basically does all the work for you. It's brilliant. That now is in there, you see, in the little dish, very nice. If you like it a bit more zesty, put more in. Uh, this is the beauty of these recipes are, you decide what you like, you decide what you don't like. Just start with the base and you'll love it. And then I'm gonna use the juice of a lemon. Now this is really good for, for zesting. I got given this, it's so good. Because what it does, it catches all the um, bits. I don't know where it's from because I got gifted it, but there we go, I got gifted it, that sounds like it was from someone else, but it's actually from my, my wife. So I'm going to put in just enough, half a lemon and a bit is all you need. And then we're looking at salt and pepper, nicely seasoned, and again you can adjust this to your own preference. And that, you just keep them up. So here now, I'm going to put this into the bowl. Beautiful pesto. Let me show you what it looks like. It's fragrant, it smells incredible. And this will work on, put it on some pasta in a salad. You can put it. So I'll show you that. It's just incredible. So, oh, it's amazing. And then once you've got that, you can do what you like with it. You can put more herbs in, different herbs, try it. Um, but the basis is the, wa the walnuts, herbs, lemon juice, olive oil, just good stuff for you. Um, and then you get this delicious, incredibly versatile, it even goes on jacked potatoes, goes on anything. It's fantastic, try it. So, number one, done. <music>back for dish number two now by the miracles of TV everything is clean again it's amazing just like that so first dish pesto where's that from Italy around that sort of area delicious hope you really like that one next I'm going a bit sort of Southeast Asian um, it's a version of a, a green curry sauce I guess but it's not really a a curry sauce, so to speak. It's more of a, a fragranty green sauce, but lovely. And it goes with anything. You can put it in noodles, uh, in a rice dish, with a noodle dish, with chicken, with vegetables, you name it. It works with so many things. It's even great as a, as a soup. So, so what have we got in this one? So I've got two tins of coconut milk. I have 
lime, turmeric, and ginger, salt and pepper. Now, with turmeric, it's uh, wonderful stuff, it's brilliant, it's so good for you, but it does stain everything. So just be careful when you're using it. I'm gonna put it in the wizard, it's probably gonna turn it yellow, but that's fine, it's okay. It's all in the name of cooking. So where do we start with this one? Now, it's a, again, it's all in one pot, one pot, one wizard. So in we go with first, and she blows one in, second one, the layers it's making. Okay, and that goes. So, next in is some ginger. Now, ginger is one of those where you can buy it in so many different ways. So, you can get the actual Fresh ginger, like that. You can buy ginger already chopped, or you can get ginger paste. As you can see, I have all three. In fact, I have a fourth, because in the freezer, I've got chopped ginger that you can buy already chopped and frozen. So it's brilliant, it keeps forever. Now, depending on how I'm feeling, depends on which one I'm gonna use. So if I'm really struggling to use a knife, paste. If I'm all right, but not too bad, I can use this one, and if I'm feeling you know, pretty confident today, I'll go for a knife. So as it's you, I will go knife. Now you'll see this, this you know, you've probably seen this knife before, again, it's another thing from Active Hands, it's just brilliant. So just loosely chop it, in that goes. And then, actually not really. The lime, just give it a little roll as best you can. It's good for your hand actually. Just helps release a bit of the, the juice inside. And then I'm just gonna, Zest, and just the smell of zested lime is just amazing. It really is. And that goes. You probably think it looks a bit more like a dessert at the moment. But it's not. I promise you, it isn't. So then, in we go with lime. Again, if you're struggling to squeeze, get someone to help you or use one of the little gizmos I was using earlier. And take your time, you don't have to rush these things. You get there, you get there in the end, it's fine. One thing I did forget to mention was <laughs> what makes it green. It's not the lime, it's the basil. So, a big, big wad of basil, stalks and all, huge big bit, in it goes. Just make sure, like I've done it once before, forgot that there was an elastic band on the basil. It's never a good thing. Elastic flavoured sauce. Mm. Turmeric. Now I'm going with half a teaspoon, because it is fairly powerful stuff, but it's, pretty, it's so good for you. So I've actually got a one teaspoon measurement, I'm just going to put half in. Be so careful, that's a bit too much. Put back in there. And there we go. And in that goes. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. See that? Double hands, nice. And then, it's lid on. Give it. As I say with, with most things that you make, taste it, just check you're happy with it, because that's what's most important. <laughs> that's so nice. It genuinely is delicious. It needs a little bit more salt, a little bit of pepper, and amazingly enough, it needs the rest of the batter. So, just taste, taste, taste. There 
another whizzy whiz. Now, that, you can keep on blending it, and you can see it's starting to go green already because the herbs are getting in there. I don't know if you can just see that, but it's starting to go, and that, that, the herbs are still quite chunky. Um, I like it like that. If you keep blending it, it'll just get green and it tastes fantastic. And then all you need to do um, is put that, warm it up in a pan. It's all done. Freeze it. You can uh, put it in freezer bags, put it wherever you like, bring it out when you need it. Bob's your uncle. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. It's not spicy, uh, it's just flavoursome and it's just really, really good for you. So that is a green Southeast Asian style sauce. Done. All right, so two dishes down and we're on to the third. So we've done European, Southeast Asian with some sort of Thai influence. Now we're going Korean. Korean food's really good for you, it's great. Uh, kimchi, delicious stuff. Again, watch out if you've got kimchi. One, it stinks, and two, it stains everything. But oh god, it's good. It's delicious stuff. So, what are we going to make? We're going to make what's called a bibimbap so uh, sauce, and it's something that you can put on on top of a, a rice dish or a noodle dish. It sort of seasons the top, but actually flows into um, any sauce you've got. It's just the best sauce you'll ever make, and you don't need much of it. So I'm going to show you how to make it in this little bowl. You can scale it up, scale it down. You can then freeze it into what I do with this one is freeze it into ice cube sizes in the in the in the freezer. Take a couple out, melt them, put them onto your dish. It's fabulous. Honestly, it really is. So this is so, this is so easy. Um, you just got to make sure you've got what you need. So for this one, we need some sugar, just a little bit, not much. Um, then some. Red pepper paste. Uh, red pepper paste you can get in a lot of places now. I actually got this in Lidl. Um, just make sure that it's not full of sugar. You can get the ones that are really horrible, but this one is actually is, is excellent, really good stuff. Um, we've got some gluten-free soy sauce, because obviously you don't want to be putting gluten and wheat into your tums. Apple cider vinegar, sesame oil, and sesame seeds. That's it. It's great. So we're going to start with the dry first. So I'm going to put in a just a level teaspoon of sugar, and then say two of sesame seeds, and then we go to to the wet. So the red pepper paste. I'm going to put one tablespoon, two tablespoons. Two and a half tablespoons, three tablespoons, why not, because I can. Then, gluten-free soy sauce, this is brilliant stuff, and we use it in a lot of seasoning, so basically half a teaspoon of soy sauce. Again, with soy sauce, I'm sure you all know, but it's, it can be very salty, so just be careful if you're using soy sauce. Don't over-season it before you put the sauce in. And then once you put the sauce in, taste it because you won't need as much salt as you think you do. Then sesame oil, lovely stuff. A full teaspoon, let it come out, there we go. And then again, a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. That my friends, is it. So this, I know I do this a lot, but the smell of this is absolutely incredible. Now you don't need, as I say, this, this here will do easily a big family dish of noodles, rice noodles, whatever noodles you've got with this just dribbled on the top because you've got the spiciness coming from the red pepper paste. You've got the sweet, the sour, the salty. You've got the crunch from the nuts. How easy was that? And this stuff, I tell you, once you've made it, it won't go back. 
Once you've been back, you ain't stopping. It's great stuff. So there you go, that's three dishes. Three sauces for courses. We've done a pesto, which you can have on a little salad for lunch. Um, you could even have it on some, like a bruschetta, be delicious, um, in pasta. Then we've done a green sort of curry-ish type sauce, which is just the most fragrant and delicious thing you'll ever have. Uh, have it on all kinds of things, whatever you like. And then we've done a like, spicy bibimbap relish to go on top of noodles and things. All of these, low FODMAP, all anti-inflammatory helpers. They're all full of omega-3s, antioxidants. Uh, it, they're, they're brilliant. So as I say, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm doing this based on what I'm learning and who I'm learning from. Um, but these are just fabulous dishes, um, regardless of what they taste and smell. Amazing. So, good luck. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm going to carry on the anti-inflammatory low fat theme next week as well, but you'll have to wait to find out exactly what I will be making. So, good luck. Hope you enjoy them. Look forward to the Q&A that's coming up any second now. Hopefully, we'll have a great chat, and I shall see you again soon. Thank you.